Now, what shall we do? There is issue of Hyogo framework for disaster management. Hyogo framework, the committee sat in a Hyogo town in Japan and they come up with a consensus and all of them have ratified. They can't be there. So, in short, it is an international framework that emphasizes early warning at all levels of country. Early warning to empower the systems in the member countries to know when this, because natural disasters are the ones which have more catastrophic than the others. To have the capacity building. Capacity building from where? If you go to some of the African countries, you will find the capacity building is at the national, national teams. But when you come to the district, to the region, to the village, and the, to the people, they are not aware of what is happening. They don't know what, is, what to do and how to do when there is a disaster. The Hugo Frame also emphasizes safety and resilience of community. When we talk of safety, is safety practice. And when the, when the community suffered any disaster, they should be able to be stronger than, when, than before the disaster hit. So this is a resilient. First of all, to build a strong community, a strong environment, environment which when the disaster hit, it will stay intact. The disaster will hit the community may, will be able to come back and become more better during after the disaster than they used to be. That is the emphasis which was given during in the framework, Hyogo framework for disaster management. Another thing which the framework insisted is the reduction of the risk factors. For example, what are the risk factors for floods? Why should the people stay into valley, into the... They should be discouraged to be in the valley. People should be encouraged to have maybe uh, some cereals so that if there is a famine, they will, they will be told how to behave when there is a disaster. And most of these disasters, if you can intervene through the risk factors, you re reduce them tremendously. The issue also of strengthening disaster preparedness. Preparedness means that people have to know what to do, how to do it during the disaster and before the disaster. So that when the disaster happens, the effect will not be uh, that much high. So in this aspect of disaster management, we say we have faces. And uh, these faces go with the definition. For example, preparedness first or preparedness are those actions, are those behaviors which result in a person because a human being is the one who suffer. Know what to do. Human being is a player. Know what to do and how to respond after the disaster has occurred. But we have the term prevention. Prevention is activity designed to provide permanent protection from disaster, which include engineering, physical protective measures, and legislation to control land use and urban planning. That is prevention. But when you come to mitigation, mitigation means that all those measures taken in advance of an avid aim at decreasing or eliminating its impact on society and the environment. We have response. 
response. These are decisions and actions taken during and after disaster. This includes immediate relief, rehabilitation, and reconstruction. I say relief means that to save lives and to sustain lives. You save lives and you sustain lives. During response, in fact, for example, if it happened that the house collapsed, the first 24 hours up to 72 hours, you cannot have, use heavy equipment. You have to use the soft means of making sure that you recover the person live, the person who are alive, because we need life. We don't need people to die. After that 72 hours, we assume that mostly have died. It has just happened recently that in one mine, there were people exhumed after 14 days. It was abnormal. It happened in Shinyanga or where? In, 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 in either Geita or some mines in the lake zone. So that is the response. Physician, immediate relief, rehabilitation, make sure those whom who have disasters, they get survive, they get enough water, they get enough food, they get enough blanket, they get enough linen, they get enough sanitation. That's why the first thing, especially during the emergency, um, for, for example, during this, the, the, the first days of, uh, of the di displacement, when people come like, as a refugee, the first thing is to make sure that you settle them where they can. They are safe, first of all. And secondly, they can, they can have sanitation, means that they have water, they have temporary latrine for, to start with. But later on, we have recovery. That is the activity to restore their vital life support system, to normalize operation. People know if they were refugee, now they can live as if they're in their land. They can start being uh, having the community, community union, household union. They can live together. This um, system to normalize operating standard and long-term activity that return life to normal. And at the recovery phase, life is brought to the normal, the way they used to live. If they were the chiefs, chiefs will be, they will be taken to their chiefs so that they continue the way they used to live. 